Um, this is a very exciting time for Pakistan. Uh, they're just coming up to an election now, and this represents for a young country the first time that they've actually gone through a full democratic period in the kind of traditional process way and got to an election. And uh, I think that's really quite a milestone for what is a young, exciting, vibrant country full of fascinating people with great skills, great professionalism, and some fantastic national resources too. And I've been working with uh, my colleague there, Mohammed Newman, in a partnership with an institution called the Institute of Management Sciences in Peshawar, which is in the northwest region of Pakistan. I first, my interest in Pakistan came about really when I was quite a small child growing up in a textile town in northeast Lancashire in the 60s. And uh, I, I developed a kind of uh, fascination with the country. Really, uh, I suppose looking back, uh, sort of quite foolish romantic dreams in a way. But I, as I began to recognize a part of the world through uh, people who were moving to my town from that part of the world. I also used to read a lot of um, books from our rather Victorian local public library. Uh, which had rather imperialistic tendencies, I have to admit, but it's what was there and I read about it. And um, there were also, at that time, many people who went on what was called the, uh, sometimes the hippie trail. People used to go, uh, who were older than me, used to uh, get on a bus somewhere in Amsterdam, travel across Europe and then walk and bus it through countries like Iraq, go over the northwest uh, and Afghanistan, over the northwest frontier and through Kashmir and into Nepal. And uh, that was something that I very much wanted to do when I grew up. And uh, I had these dreams of um, quite uh, exotic places and uh, jewels and this kind of uh, thing. And it really stuck in my mind for a long time. And of course, I wasn't able to do that because of the various troubles and conflicts that have arisen. But when this project came up, which was very much in that region in Peshawar, I was very keen to take it on because of this deep held feeling that uh, I somehow had uh, a sense of uh, destiny or connection there. Um, and it's been uh, a fascinating five years in my life and something that I think will stay with me forever. This is the region that we're talking about. And uh, you can see there the uh, map of the region, and you can see uh, somewhere in the middle of that one in the square there, you can see uh, Peshawar, which is where IM Sciences is located, which is a vibrant management school. It's probably about the same size as the management school that I'm in here, 70 or 80 staff. It has a lot of uh, master's programs. It has a lot of undergraduate programs. It's seeking to, de to develop itself as a research-focused institution with both a, a local sense and a local sense of community and sustainability and also an international presence too. Uh, so it can be a beacon for education in the region. Okay, so Pakistan, as I've mentioned earlier, we sometimes hear a lot of bad news about Pakistan. There's a lot of good news too and uh, Goldman Sachs, for example, who uh, I'm, I'm not always quite in the same uh, uh, world as Goldman Sachs on everything, but um, they have identified that what they call the next 11, a set of countries outside the uh, BRICS, the Brazil, Russia, India, China, that they see as the next 11 who are going to be very much on the world stage in the next few years. Now, that is because now one of the issues, of course, with Pakistan is that it does have some systematic problems that are uh, currently in the way of the uh, development that they seek to get over some of the issues of poverty, lack of inclusion, health issues, education issues, and also obviously conflict issues too. Um, the systematic issues tend to be around energy. They still have uh, a lot of power cuts, um, regular power cuts. The energy supply, the electricity supply is intermittent. 
Um, they have education issues across every age group. Um, and in some regions, too, the education of women causes cultural problems. They have transport problems, weak institutions, and also there are conflict and insurgency issues going on as well. And that's particularly so in the northwest of Pakistan region, where you have uh, border insurgencies. You can see the border with Afghanistan. And uh, flooding, too, is a big problem in that part of the country and in other regions, too, but very specifically up there. Nonetheless, there is a lot of good news, as well as the kind of systemic factors that I, the, the sort of broader factors that I've just outlined. There is a fascinating Pashtun culture in that part of the world, uh, a very old, rich, exciting people. And they also have very, uh, very uh, rich and embedded sectors uh, in, with, fascinating, with fantastic natural resources, marble, jewelry, leather, textiles. And generally, you've got big markets and emerging middle class, untapped markets, a lot of very professional people, and a lot of enterprise expertise that could go some way to generating what we hope will be sustainable growth in that region. And the project that I'm, that I'm working with is called Inspire. Uh, it's part of the Inspire strategic partnerships that are run by the British Council with not only Pakistan, but other regions in Southeast Asia too. And um, it's very much about knowledge exchange. How can we work together through educational endeavors to try and get some sense of building a sustainable future, building on the resources that are there, but not building in a way that's economically unsustainable, that's environmentally unsustainable, that excludes certain cultural groups or excludes certain genders. And whilst the project itself is uh, only expected to last for four years, it's something that we strongly believe is building some very personal networks that will persist into the future. And we have uh, the, the, one of the key aims of the project is that we slowly build these networks out and draw people in, not with any uh, grand expectations of effecting change overnight in what is obviously a very sensitive cultural and conflictual area, but with a sense of at least trying to effect improvement on a knowledge base that's sound and that is developed by the people there on the ground with their communities and hoping to impact through those communities, asking how can we do things differently? How can we start to act in a systemic manner? How can we build trust where there isn't trust? And how can we start to realize some of the value of all these natural resources through education? My subject is entrepreneurship and innovation. I look at SMEs. I look at everything from cutting edge digital media to uh, on the ground developments in uh, developing countries and disadvantaged communities. And that's where I see personally that I can make a difference. One of the uh, issues for me is that this isn't about knowledge transfer, you know, this old fashioned sense of development, oh, you go in and uh, throw some knowledge at people and hope that it'll all work out okay. This is about knowledge exchange, relationship building, and enabling ground up initiatives from within the communities. Now, what we're actually hoping to do is uh, a project that has many strands within it. It's got a research project within it that's focused on the various sectors that I identified, marble, leather, jewelry, textiles, also agriculture too. We've got curriculum development going on, looking at courses in entrepreneurship and SME development at the both undergraduate and postgraduate levels. We also have split site PhD students who carry out some of this research and spend about three months every year here working with us. And uh, we also carry out SME outreach too. So what we're really seeking to do is to create people, 
either staff of the institution, students or uh, people who they work with in the community as, as potential leaders in SME development in these areas. So uh, again, that's the school, just a quick sense of uh, what it's about, Institute of Management Sciences, the name there in Peshawar. Um, that's some of the uh, events that we hold. We do a lot of things because of the transport and uh, insurance difficulties and travel difficulties in the region. We do a lot in the actual, uh, in, uh, by electronic means, by vid conference. So you can see the nice gender mix in the classroom there. That's some of the SME people there. Um, one of the areas, just to give an example, that we've been looking at is the marble mining industry. And Mohammed Newman did his PhD in this area, where we did two case studies and looked at the uh, marble mining industry. The Pakistan government in 2007 identified this sector as one which they wanted to improve systemically to yield more value for the region. We found that um, you know, there, are, there is 70% wastage of a very high quality stone there in the region. Um, indiscriminate blasting, poor technologies to uh, get the stone into the shapes and designs that people want. The processing industry too um, lacks certain uh, channels to the people in the region and to international markets and so on. How do we develop this? How do we build this in a sustainable manner? How do we ensure that um, we're not just um, creating value that goes out of the region rather than remaining in the region and building up the local community and improving circumstances there. Um, we've done quite a bit of research on this. There is a whole uh, PhD focused on it. Um, we have a strategy of publishing both in international journals so that the story gets out about what good things there are in this region but also we have a strategy of local publishing too, through reports, through the SME Association and through local journals, so that the story is connected locally too. I think it's easy sometimes uh, we have these um, uh, research impact exercises that kind of uh, prioritize some uh, high quality journals but it's important that we do have to publish in but it's important too to remember the local scene and have a dual bottom-up approach to publication. And what we have been able to do is map out the marble industry as a systemic construct with very distinctive and uh, complex interactions, both at the individual level, the meso level, the firm level, and the macro level. And we've been able to suggest many improvements the um, Pakistan government have had one or two initiatives since 2007 when they identified their desire to do this. The, in, the actual uh, uh, activities that have taken place have been useful, but have been rather piecemeal because they've not really sat back and joined all the dots on this complex cultural map uh, that includes many processes, systems and structures. So, to conclude, really, we're hoping to uh, influence the local economy long term in a sustainable manner, considering the environment, considering the local people, um, through training, education, and outreach. And um, I think the biggest thing for me is I don't see this as I see this as part of my research community, something that I can do. It's a normal and internalized part of my education network. People sometimes ask, why do you do this, given the difficulties of travel, given the difficulties of the region? And my answer is, why would you not do it? I think it's the most important and significant thing that I've done in my career.